Now, verse 11, "...when the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. And when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge." That's very important to note, that you learn lessons, and we should learn lessons from the experience of others around us. Verse 13, "...whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be answered." Now, God has said that. That's either true or it's not true. And I think that you'll find it true. We could give present-day illustrations in public life, but I'll not do that. Verse 14, "...a gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom strong wrath." And you remember that when Jacob was returning back, he knew Esau had robbed him and thought Esau was his enemy because he'd heard Esau intended to kill him. Well, the fact of the matter is that he sent gifts ahead, you know, and to pacify him. Well, I want to say that he didn't need to do that. God had taken care of that. But that actually is not the way that it's done. And you know, there are people that say today, well, I'm going to be generous because I'll be rewarded. Or, I'm going to forgive somebody something because if I do that, why, it'll make me feel better. Jane Marchant wrote a little poem that illustrates that, and that sort of thing is wrong. Listen to this. If I forgive an injury because resenting would poison me, I may feel noble, I may feel splendid, but it isn't exactly what Christ intended. No, it isn't. We are to forgive. Why? Because God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us. That's the reason we're to be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving what? Not because it makes you feel better. Low motives are given. And then in verse 15, it's a joy to the just to do what's right, but it's the ruin to the workers of iniquity. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall abide in the assembly of the dead. God says you don't rehabilitate criminals. The thing to do is to get the little fellas in these crime-ridden areas and give them the Word of God, friends. We're doing it the wrong end, according to God. And I somehow another feel that God's right about all of this. And here is a verse that I wish that I could spend time with, but can't do it. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. Now we have glorified the theater. And as a result, the philosophy that is taught on television and taught in plays and in books has got our entire society, the great principles, moral principles, everything is turned upside down. Now at one time, Even in the court of a king, a jester or an entertainer was called a fool. I don't think that's been changed in God's sight at all. But today, entertainers are sacred cows. They are the ones that are popular. They get on these talk programs and glorify themselves and one another. God says, and still says it, "...he that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man." He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. And there have been several that have committed suicide, and I won't mention names. And one man made this statement, I'm bored with life. Another is. It's not worth living. (laughs) And another comedian, when he was dying, his friends gathered around for him to say something funny. He looked at them in stark fear and dread and said, This is not funny. No, my friend, we've got the thing turned upside down, and no wonder the television today is like the wilderness of Moab. Nothing really to see. And it becomes pretty boring to look at it. Now, I want to mention this verse 18. The lawless shall be a ransom for the righteous. But that's been turned around. And Jesus, he was the righteous, and he was made a ransom for us the lawless, the ones that do not do good. There's none that doeth good, no, not one.